We are back now with Kristen Elfine, the Democratic candidate running for State Senate District 19 for the seat vacated by Roger Roth. Your campaign, how's it going? Uh, is it mainly male? Is it door to door? How have you been reaching your voters? Yeah, all of the above. I mean, there's knocking on doors, there's phone calls, there's mail, there's lit. Um, my favorite is actually knocking on the doors. Um, I love having a conversation, and every conversation that I have at the door, and we coach our volunteers, is to ask questions first. I would rather listen. Um, I come up to the door and say, my name is, um, I'm on the ballot for this position, I'm here to ask what's on your mind on state politics without raising your blood pressure. And they usually giggle, <laughs> and then they start to tell me. And in that conversation, I may hear that we have things aligned, I may hear the thing that we don't. But in the end, what I want them to hear from me is that I listened first. Because again, the job of the elected official is to listen to everybody. And many times, there's something that I should learn from them in their conversation. Sometimes we just want to be heard. Sometimes people just want to know that someone is paying attention and willing to listen to them. And once we let that stress down a little bit, we realize there actually is far more in common. Um, there's so much nonsense that goes on in politics today that that's what I'm trying to cure. So just being a real person, being a listener first, um, I'm not here to tell anybody what they should think. I'm trying to hear what they need and why they need it, and then I'll share with them who I am and where I come from, and we can see how much we have in common. It's just the way that, in my opinion, it should be done. Um, people like that. It, it's amazing how many people have never had anybody come to their door, and much less listen to them. That's who I am. That's what I try to do. If you do make it to the Senate, what will be your approach to education. You've seen the commercials, Tim Michaels saying essentially we're spending too much on education, much the opposite story from Tony Evers, yeah. who was the former superintendent of schools for our state. Yeah. Um, are we doing enough for education? Education is a very, very, very large conversation. And I would say this to begin with, without education, our communities will struggle. There's no question. They are, education is the foundation of everything good in our community. If we want to reduce crime, the answer is to make sure we educate. If we want to improve, improve retention of families in the area, the answer is good schools. If we want to attract talent from outside of the state to come work at corporations in the state, the answer is to have good quality schools. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at education as both an obligation and an opportunity to add to our communities. Funding is important. We, and it's not a this or that situation. There are other things that must be funded also. We're not taking anything away. But we have not been properly play, you know, playing with the dollars. We talk about this, this $5.6 billion surplus. It's not surplus. It's money that has been coming in that has not gone out the way it traditionally has. Traditionally, money has come into the state of Wisconsin. They have then sent it back out to the municipalities, the counties, and the schools to pay the budget. And in the last 10, 12 years, they have not done that. Not to say that no money has come out, but there hasn't been a, a caught inflationary increase going down to the schools in over 10 years. In 10 years, now you and I are going to the grocery store, we understand what inflation is, right? In 10 years, if we have never increased that number, that means that we are behind, we are shorting the schools. That's not right. Again, we must, both opportunity and obligation, take care of our schools and fund it adequately. It is who we are to provide proper education. It's not a matter of, of overdoing anything. It's about going back to, again, I don't have a problem, by the way, of any organization, whether it be government or business, going through a system of tightening their belts and cleaning things up and streamlining. I think every organization goes through that. So 10 years ago, when a change was made, I wasn't necessarily against that. But you can't hold that there forever. You have to clean it up, straighten it out, and then let it go back to functioning. That's what has to happen. Let it be funded properly, not overfunding but where it should be to maintain a great education opportunity for every child in the state of Wisconsin. In your campaign literature, you say the Affordable Care Act has increased health care accessibility, but still more work needs to be done. Yes. What did you mean by that? Well, I am, you know, I'm a middle class person. I'm self-employed, so let's just talk about it. And there's a reality that the Affordable Health Care Act did wonderful things in terms of people having access to health care. Uh, especially people with pre-existing conditions. I don't believe any of that should go away. I think, uh, I think everyone knows that we must continue to offer that. Where there is an issue, 
are the middle class people, the self-employed, the small businesses, in terms of how much it costs. Um, subsidies are there to a certain point, and then they disappear. So, I mean, I'll, in my example, I mean, I had uh, $15,000 out of pocket this year. I don't really have anything major going on. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not in a situation of having to pay the high out of pocket. So there's work to be done in that we have to make sure the coverage is provided to all, but we also have to make sure that we don't have a situation where some are paying almost nothing, and then you have a batch of people in the middle that are paying the bulk of the cost. That's not right. We can't just push up. I think the assumption sometimes is if somebody makes $100,000 a year, they're wealthy. That's not true. That is not true, especially on a family of four. So we have to look at it and see with empathy from every family person's situation and how can we adjust it so that there is some value to everyone and we don't feel like we're just pushing it to one brand of people. And I think there's, a, there's that sense right now. So it doesn't mean I have the answers. It means that I'm going to be looking for the answers and that we understand we can't take it from here, but we've got to help the people here. It's not perfect. It is better than we had it before. Your thoughts on the overturning of Roe versus Wade? It's such a sensitive topic. The last thing anybody should have to do is talk between the two of us or to a camera about what they want to do in a very, very difficult personal situation. I don't think they should have to ask my permission before they do something. I also don't think that I, as, or you, or anyone should be telling someone what they should or shouldn't do. I think there has to be some reality to allowing people and their doctors to make the best decision for them without someone sitting in there overshadowing a decision. And as a result, a new phrase has popped up in this election cycle, Rovember, meaning it could or could not have an effect on the election. How much of an effect do you think the overturning of Roe versus Wade will have on elections, be they uh, state elections or national? Um, the value of going door to door talking to people, and, and again, the people that I'm talking to are the people in the middle. And I hear a lot of things. I have, a lot of, I have definitely heard people that are strongly on one side or the other, but I'm also hearing people that would traditionally are actually pretty conservative but they know that that's more than what they wanted. They know that it's, it's beyond what they wanted and they don't believe in it. So I think that there is something going on. I think there is a lot of people that may not approve, they may not have ever chosen that for themselves, but yet they understand that it should not be our decision as to what someone else does in an extremely personal situation. Kristen Alfheim is our guest, and she's running for a Senate seat, uh, District 19. We have much more to come after this, so please stay right there.